What you're looking at now is the policy rule screen where you can manually write rules to quickly reduce your tax surface. The bottom override block rule blocks and alerts all assets with the database label that's directly connected to the internet over any port, any protocol. The databases can still communicate with a proxy server for Windows updates or other servers in the environment if allowed. If you think about some of the major breaches that have occurred, what happened? A third party contractor accessed the network from a jump box. There was no east west control. They found a database directly connected to the internet, opened a back door, and exfiltrated the data. This one simple rule would have prevented the situation. Now let's look at this override block rule that complements your EDR antivirus solution by blocking and alerting all endpoint to endpoint communication over any port, any protocol. This rule is critical in preventing lateral movement in the event of a breach. If we look at the override allow rule above, this allows the response team or help desk to access the endpoints only using RDP and SSH so they can perform administrative tasks. Examining this override block rule blocks at the service level. Processes can include multiple services, so blocking a process also blocks the included services. This feature enables a more granular enforcement. This override block rule blocks and alerts any endpoint from using cryptographic services. The above override allow rule allows endpoints to use cryptographic services to access www.akamai.com using only port 443. You can also write other global block rules, such as to block RDP, SSH, Telnet, etc., and write global allow rules for administrative tasks. So in summary, manually writing rules, usually global block rules with exception allow, can quickly help reduce your attack surface.